<clears throat> Hi, uh, this is Travis for Sliver Surfer One. Today I'm going to be taking out this macro rig to show you how to shoot macro, uh, best settings in my opinion, and where to shoot um, and, and the conditions I like to shoot in. First off, you want to choose an area, a path that you're walking along, that is bordered with lots of vegetation that is about uh, not going to be too hard on your back. I'm using a Pentax K5 right now. It's a really good camera. It's got a manual uh, flash ring on it. This this flash is a Pentax uh, 080C uh, and it is a TTL but it's not a PTTL. You don't need to buy a really expensive flash for, for this work. You just need one that you can adjust to quarter or half, you know, at least lower than full. I guess sometimes even use a, a Minolta on this one. As long as it fires on your camera, it's got that center pin that makes a fire on your camera like a Canon will work, Minolta will work, and Nikon flash will work on this. Um, uh, Vivitars, also look it up and see if these flashes that you're using have a low enough trigger voltage. Some will have a high trigger voltage and destroy your digital camera. And I'll show you the rig here. You don't need to use a flash bracket like this. I'm just using it for recording purposes. Unscrew this. You can see what the rig looks like from the side. Okay. Um, I, I'm keeping it. This is a manual lens. Manual lenses are fine. Just as long as you have the aperture uh, control with your camera. Okay, this one here has, it's a Pentax camera with the Pentax A manual lenses. This one is the dental macro with the dental macro uh, close-up filter, which is a phenomenal thing. They're really hard to come by, but it shoots at two to one ratio. That means the image that you put onto the sensor takes up two times as much space on the sensor as it occupies in, in real light. It's projecting through here a three millimeter bug is going to be take up six millimeters on the sensor. Let's put this back up like this. Okay so what I'm doing today is I'm shooting in aperture priority mode. It has nothing to do with the flash really because aperture priority is just going to change your shutter speed and you know with flashes shutter speed makes no difference at all. I previously determined by chimping that my flash at quarter power will nicely expose a 200 ISO at f22. Okay, You can figure this out on your own anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're outside or inside because the flash is so close to whatever you're shooting that it basically cancels out sunlight and ambient light when it shoots. The reason why you want to have it set in AV mode is you want to have a nice background. You don't want to have your background all black. It looks cool in some photos, but it doesn't look realistic. It gives it kind of a studio shot look. You want it set in aperture priority. You can switch your pro your aperture and you can change your, your ISO and you let the camera change your shutter speed. Hi, I'm not crazy. I'm just doing a YouTube video. <laughs> okay, so what you also want to do is you want to go to your exposure setting and set it down to about minus one stop exposure. Although the, the, the flash throw doesn't go very far, you will get a little bad, a bit of that as well. So it kind of compensates. Uh, and you'll get a gist of how well your flash does that. So I go about one stop down. You can bring it up and, and post, okay? Okay, so we're going to go to... AV mode and we're going to take off the flash. So if you set your camera to expose for uh, average of the entire thing and you have it in AV mode and you press it, so we're getting a, an average reading of around 60. And right? look for a brighter. So we're getting an average of about 60. So you take a picture. Let's try again. At 125. Alright, so we're going to it, put it at about 125. I'm going to set it manually. So I chimped what I want the background to look. Okay, I'm going to set it to 125 and put my flash back on. Alright, and then we're good to go. 
All right, so what we did is we chimped, we chimped the back up. And how you do that is you, you keep your settings at what you want it to be for the, the flash. And then you chimp for the background by adjusting your shutter speed. Because your shutter speed's not gonna change how the flash exposes your subject. So let's just take a, a little shot here. Um, when you're shooting, you want to use Tuck your elbows in, you can see here, tuck your elbows in, and when you look through the lens, you won't see anything at all except for, for blurry shapes. Well, you'll just see a blur at first, and then you'll see, as you move closer to your object, you'll see it, you'll start to see it better. And then you gotta be real quick, cause your image is only gonna have a depth of field of about a millimeter, right? So you gotta be quick, you gotta basically let the motion of your body and the motion of the wind, uh, you gotta get in sync with that. So, you know, it's gonna be frustrating at first because you're gonna miss a ton of shots. It's more satisfying though, in a way, because you can't really see how well in focus it is uh, by looking at the monitor, unless you're gonna check all the time. But yeah, it's almost like shooting film again. Okay, so I changed the angle a bit so that you could see what I'm taking pictures of. We're walking along the side here and you can see there's a lot of plants and whatnot. You really don't need to fuss about your camera, but you do need to keep an eye out for bugs. All right, I see one. Flying bugs are the most difficult. I see a ladybug here. You see it later. I'm going to take a couple more shots of him. You brace yourself on your knee. Oh, he doesn't want me to take any more photos of him. Um, the reason why he is on this little plant here is because it's covered with aphids. Another reason why you want to have your flash at a quarter is because you can fire off a bunch of shots without having to wait for your flash. You just walk and look around, see. Get better at noticing stuff. There's a nice easy subject here. There's a little snail. You can hold on to the branch. There's aphids there too. What you can also do when you have a lot of wind is you can grab the plant with one hand and take the picture with the other. No, they didn't. They were they were very polite. Yeah, they generally won't jump on you unless you make eye contact. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so he's I just... a small retriever though, so he's all about, I love you, I love you. <laughs> Come on, smother. Yeah. Come on, smother. Come on, smother. Come on, smother. Come on, smother. So it's pretty difficult with this rig here. You know, you, best thing to do is try not to throw a shadow onto the bugs. I think that's why I'm not so successful today because of the camera I got rigged on top of this flash bracket. Another ladybug, ladybird hiding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the reason why I'm smiling is because I think I caught him just as he was taking off. Um, yeah. 
Oh, I don't know if it's in focus, but, you know, cross your finger. You don't need a fancy rig like this. Uh, I'm taking this out because I haven't shot with this. I bought this one, and I thought it was a really neat lens. Uh, I got a bargain on it years ago. Uh, I never really had taken it out for a shoot, so I thought I would. Um, normally, how I shoot macro photography is with extension tubes and a 50 millimeter lens. Um, this way is a really nice way to shoot, though. Um, I think uh, the reason being is because if I'm out here and I see something big that I want to shoot, all I gotta do is rip this off and I can shoot it like normal, just switch to a, a, a different mode. Um, and refocus because the flash if I'm shooting something even like three feet away flash isn't going to make a difference um, yeah so sorry I get distracted by bugs so I can put, take this off put it in my pocket put it back on when I'm ready because it's got a magnet on it oh, there's a, a hope, hopefully he's not going to fly away Hopefully I got that guy. That was a little tiny fly or wasp. Not a lot of shadows right now, so we can maybe get this guy here. I'm just moving myself to do the focus. When you have a manual focus lens, you move yourself back and forth. Even if you have an autofocus lens, I feel the manual focus shoots uh, is much better much better because you're in control full control it's nice and cool right now we're not casting a lot of shadows i'm gonna take down my speed a bit yeah so it's sunny again i'm gonna lower the exposure of my back raising the shutter speed when the sun comes up more by one stop This lens will go to 32, um, but I don't like to go to 32 because uh, even though there's a larger depth of field, the parts that are in focus are not as in focus as, as at f22. Um, and I find when you're shooting with a lens for macro photography, I know everybody says go fast. I've got myself i've got a pentax f 2.8 to 32 as well and it's no sharper than this i think this is actually sharper than that and there's uh, the ones with nice bokeh like made by tokina that are 2.5 or 2.8 uh for vivitard and tokina and uh i don't think they're any sharper than this one uh for macro photography so you may as well go for an f4 save yourself some money this one in particular you're not going to save money but there is a version of this one that's not a macro den. Um, but I do think the, che the cheapest way is to go with a 50 and a good set of extension tubes. Um, go with your native extension tubes or one made for the native body. Don't go for those cheap um, Chinese $10 ones. Just screw on. You want something that can communicate with the body so that you can have your aperture go from wide open to closed when you take the picture.